Welcome and good morning. I want to talk to you just a minute about the council. Uh, you have a yellow. Thank you. You have a I'll swallow it. You have a yellow flyer in your bulletin. If you'd please take it out. Your council heard the call of Abraham. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths of yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. So our North Star as a council is we are seekers extending an inclusionary welcome to all. And our goal for this year is to extend our spiritual outreach and increase our event participation by at least 5%. We decided it had to be measurable. So that's the goal that we have proposed this year and we're seeking your input. If you'll turn the page over, you'll see we have brainstormed an action plan which reviews four steps. And what we would like you to do is to look these over, give us input, prayerfully consider what you might do as to help support this. It, some people are willing to make a poster. Others might be willing, willing to help with prayer or communication or church brochures or whatever you are called to do. We all have different gifts and we would be blessed by everybody looking at this list and picking at least one thing that you would be willing to support. If you now will turn over to back to the other side, we are asking for your input before the council adopts this. So if there's something on here you don't like or something you think we should add, please make sure you speak up and let us know. There are two questions on the bottom. What support, what would you support and participate and give to these actions. In other words, what will you do as a fellow Christian with the call of Abraham? What roadblocks or challenges do you see in these actions? And then I'm gonna ask you to add a number three. And so if you'll take a pew pencil or whatever you can, and at the bottom of this, the Worship and Music Committee has requested that we consider moving our service from 9.30 to 10. And so we would like you to tell us if you prefer 9.30, if you prefer 10, and what if we move to 10 o'clock, what would that impact be? We'd really appreciate your input in that. And uh, we'll be collecting this for those of you who don't stay for brunch on the way out. And for those of you who do, it'll be collected uh, after, at the end of your brunch. And while I'm talking about brunch, I want you to know that whether you brought food or not, this Bethany has plenty of food. It's never a shortage. So you're all welcome and we hope you stay. And as you're at the brunch, Beth Grambo will be collecting your yellow sheets. So thank you very much. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to those of you who are mothers of any kind or for those of you who have a mother, somehow you qualify in that. Happy Mother's Day. And we just thank you for being here and we thank you for all the um, new faces and visitors that we have here today. So um, friends of Bethany, please make sure you give a, a hello to all these new people who are here. When we thank you for being here today. Uh, we have quite a few announcements. So the first is that my youngest made district tennis, and so I will not be here on Tuesday. I'm going to go to her match. We're very excited, yeah. 
And, um, and then I am taking a couple days off for continuing ed. So I won't be here. I am available by phone and text and emergencies, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so we have a th thank you for the hospitality team for the Dose de Mayo party last night or on Friday. It was a lot of fun, and um, we had some music and some trivia and some great food, and it was just a lot of fun. So we thank you for, for putting that together. And on May 20th, next Saturday, we have cleanup day. And I'm hoping and expecting to see all of you there because we have lots to do. So we have inside and outside duties and um, we just need to get everything all spruced up for the next season. And we are also in need for people to sign up for uh, worship volunteer spots like greeter and ushers and communion prep. So please um, take a moment to do that. Uh, the list is on the board and on the bulletin board. And our next fish, is May 29th. It's, uh, the setup is at 9 a.m. And then May 30th is the distribution, which is, I, I think, the 29th is Memorial Day. And then the next day is the distribution. And uh, VBS, oh, actually, I'll just pause there. Uh, Pam, what are things we need for VBS? Top ramen. Top ramen. Flour. Flour. Sugar. Sugar. and soaps. Okay. Um, VBS, please sign up. We have limited space, so um, June 26th through 29th. And I just want to say I went to the um, resource fair at Lexington Elementary, and I'd love to give you out a sign-up list, but I gave them all away. So um, please let us know if you're interested, and we'll make sure you get the, the form to fill out. It was a great time. It was wonderful to talk to the kids and to talk to so many parents. Okay, uh, on the next slide, we are, can you change the slide? There you go. We need a volunteer coordinator. Today is Rick and Artist's last day and we'll have a special blessing for them. Uh, we'll also have a um, special music presentation by Brady Goss this morning for Mother's Day. But we are gonna need, we're in need of a new volunteer coordinator. So we need someone to set up uh, the ushers and the greeters and the and the volunteers that happen on Sunday. It's a it's very important job <laughs> and um, it really helps. Amy. Yeah. Okay. Well well thank you. <laughs> a great way to get to know people. Okay, Amy, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, let's talk after. That'd be really nice. Thank you. Um, park rangers, we also need VBS helpers. So we are looking for park rangers. Our theme is happy campers. And uh, it'll be fun day. We're hoping to get, I'd love to get 20 kids in here, but that really depends on adult, adult helpers. And I do want to share a moment at this resource fair, um, I ran into two of our littles that came last year, and they were so excited to see me that there was a VBS, and they knew who I was, and, and they wanted to come, and they were waiting for me, and then it turned out our VBS is the same as their Disneyland trip, and they were sad. <laughs> so that made me feel really good. <laughs> That was a definite plus, but you know, it's, it's a fun time and we get silly and we, and we have a really good time. So I really hope that you'll consider doing that. Um, okay. And, uh, la, la, la. okay. So with that, we're happy mother's day. The Lord be with you. And right now I'd like to invite our special musical guest up to play something special for mother's day. What are you going to play? Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. Um, thank you. This is this is Brady.
you, Brady. That was awesome. Good job. Thank you very much. How many years have you been playing, Brady? His second year. That's really good. Good job. With that, please rise for the confession and absolution. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. You may be seated for the opening song. This place the new light is streaming now is the darkness vanished away see in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day gather us in the lost and forsaken gather us in the blind and the lame Call to us now and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of your name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery, we are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us a courage to enter the song. Here in the take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion hearts that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in the heaven light years away. Here in this place the new light is shining, that is the 
kingdom and now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, all people together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bone. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Our first lesson is from Acts 17, 22 through 31. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, Athen, Athenians, I'm sorry, I mispronounced. I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with an inscription to an unknown God, that therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord in heaven and, uh, of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted times, the times of their existence and boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring, since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals, while God was, has overlooked the times of human ignorance. Now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the whole judged, world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Our psalm today is uh, Psalm number uh, 66, 8 through 20, and will be read responsively. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out, us out into a place of refreshment. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. If I had cherished evil with my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld un 
unfailing love from, from me. <clears throat> Our second lesson is from Peter 3, 13 through 22. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, and the righteousness righteous for the unrighteous in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few of, that is, eight persons, were saved from through water and baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel today comes from John chapter 14. Jesus said to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. I'd love to do uh, bring the youth up for a, a youth children's message. Yeah, you sit up here. Okay, let's see. Thank you. Ah, nice. Well, this is nice to see a whole bunch of you today. I know now you're cousins. Uh, yeah, except for you're not a cousin. <laughs> but you're a friend. Well, today we are talking about um, how Jesus does not leave us orphans. Do you know what an orphan is? Do you know what, what do you, what's an orphan? Here. Basically abandoned from their mom and dad. And no. <laughs> no. 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 She's close. What do you think? Um, an orphan is someone whose parents passed away. Okay. So close. Yeah, she's right. And, and you're right, too, that uh, in, in – the idea is that you're kind of by yourself, right? And I know that, um, you know, yeah, that is a sad thing, isn't it? Yeah. But we're going to talk about how Jesus is with us in those sad times a little bit. So when you're feeling sad, sometimes it's not about being orphaned by physical mom and dad leaving us. Sometimes it just is when we feel really alone. That could be another way of thinking about being orphaned, right? So... Let's talk about some ways that you see um, when 
when you feel kind of alone or sad, how you see Jesus come to you. Does anyone have a thought? What are some happy things that you can think of? When Olivia actually wants to snuggle me. Aw, how sweet is that? Okay, seeing you're being Jesus to your sister, right? Does anyone else have another thought? Snuggle our pet rabbits. Oh, our pet rabbits, yeah. What else? Do you have any other thoughts? What are, okay. My parents. Yeah, with parents can come to you when you're not feeling, when you're feeling kind of sad? Okay. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit more today, about how Jesus comes to us when we're feeling a little bit alone. So let us do a copycat prayer. Um, dear God. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for letting us know that you are there. Thank you for letting us know that you're there. Even when we're feeling sad or down. Even when we're feeling sad or down. And also in those times when we feel happy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Return to your seats. Well, good morning. Grace and peace to you from our creator, God, Jesus, God's son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So there are key moments in life that alter our DNA, so to speak, both on the good side and on the bad. For instance, a child born to us alters us and changes us into a parent. A grandchild born changes our nature once again. Graduating from a program draws a distinct line from student to in the real world. There's a multitude of lines drawn that create a before and they create an after. Many of those lines are good, like the ones mentioned, but there are difficult ones too that change us. Well, we know through our faith that God is with us, sometimes in those really tough moments, we feel a vast loneliness that is out of equilibrium. <laughs> That's the wrong word. <laughs> I shouldn't have used that. It's too long. Those really tough moments that we feel a vast loneliness with what we do know. It can even feel as though God is far away from us. And during those times, we wonder where God is. And you might feel more orphaned at the time than you feel held. And even those with the strongest of faiths can feel that distance at all the wrong moments, the moments where you really need to know that God is there. There's a devotional that I think about often. I've shared this with the Moments at Bethany group. It's a story of three women who are praying. With the first woman, Jesus comes and touches her, and he tells her he is there. With the second woman, Jesus tells her he is there, but he does not touch her. And with the third woman, Jesus does not do anything at all. Someone asked Jesus if he did not touch the third woman or talk with her because she didn't believe. Jesus answered, no. All three women had faith, but the first woman struggled with her faith, so Jesus just let her know in multiple ways that he was there. The second woman knows that Jesus is there, but really needed the extra assurance, so he spoke to her and told her he was there. The third woman actually had the most faith, for she did not doubt that Jesus was there beside her listening to her prayer, and he did not need to do anything more. As one who has a strong faith, I suffer in this devotional. I want to also have that physical feeling that Jesus has wrapped his arms around me, and I also desperately want to hear his voice saying that he is here with me. And I want to be known as one with a strong faith who already knows that Jesus is there with me. 
in life's toughest moments, I really need that physical hug or that word of reassurance. I want Jesus to be physically right there beside me, holding me close. During an incredible time of trial, my best friend said that I could come over and sit in her park-like backyard until she got home. It was a lovely August day, and I was numb from the day and the experience. So I just laid down in the grass and felt the earth. I truly felt Jesus hold me in that moment. But later when my friend came home, she brought me in, and she just let me sleep. It was a simple but profound care, the kind of care that comes from one who just knows you so well. In that moment, she was Jesus in the flesh to me. This was a time of extreme trial, and it was also a time of a deep understanding of John 14, 18. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. Jesus showed up for me through the Holy Spirit, both through the earth that held me and in a friend who cared for me. And sometimes you just need the physical version of Jesus with skin on. You need someone to physically give you a hug or say the right thing or just physically be there for you. But it isn't in just these sorrowful moments. It is in those big moments, good or bad, that you just need someone to walk with you to be there for you in a way that fills you. Throughout my life, there are many people that have come to me to help me or have been there for me or to open a window when one door has closed. People who walk beside me during difficult times, people who are just there at just the right time in just the right way. I hope as you look over your time on earth, you see where Jesus came to you through others, through moments of peace and kindness. We all know we love Jesus. We all know that Jesus has been there in a ways we can never explain to others. But there are those times when we really need a hug. We really need someone face to face. We pray that Jesus comes to us and then our best friend knocks on the door unexpectedly, or a loved one gives you a call. That person might be your spouse or your child or your sister or brother or a friend that you haven't talked to in a long time. It could be an encounter with a stranger in the exact place needed, in the exact way you needed it. In verse John 14, 18, Jesus says, I, we, he will not leave us orphaned. He is coming to us. And there's so many times when we just need Jesus to show up. We need a sign, a moment, a stir in the wind, anything that makes us know that Jesus is there. But I have found, and I pray you have as well, that when we need a hug from one with face and arms, that someone shows up and helps you get to the next moment. And when you receive that kind of love, you know somewhere inside you that Jesus was there beside you. Please pray with me. Thank you, dear God, for you are not one to abandon us. Instead, you draw us close. You do not love from far away, but from where we can feel your presence. Oh, God, we thank you. Thank you for each person you have put into our lives who have been Jesus in the flesh to us. Thank you for each person you have brought to our lives to be Jesus to them. It is not easy, you know, Lord, this life thing. It comes with sadness and heartache, disappointments. It also comes with fun and joy and exciting things. Help us to remember the latter. Thank you for all the ways you do not leave us orphaned. You show up in the skin of those we love, a best friend, a spouse, our children and grandchildren, our teachers, our classmates, our mentors, our friends, our fathers, and our mothers. You show up through a sentence, through a kind word of a stranger, through the beauty of the earth. You know, God, we give you thanks and praise for all that you are. Let us not forget those times when you were right there by our side, holding us up and sending us those who brought the comfort, 
the hug, the care to us at the exact right time of need. For this, we praise you, O Christ. We thank you for coming to us. We thank you for never leaving us orphaned or alone. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. A merit of my own I claim, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fades, Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I have a special prayer for Mother's Day. I start with a quote from Julian of Norwich. As truly as God is our Father, so just as truly is God our Mother. In our Father, God Almighty, we have our being. In our merciful Mother, we are remade and restored. Our fragmented lives are knit together and made perfect. And by giving and yielding ourselves through grace to the Holy Spirit, we are made whole. Please pray with me. Holy One, we gather in your presence to give you thanks and to celebrate the gift of your love. A love that supports and nurtures and challenges us in ways that strengthen and transform us. We offer you praise and thanksgiving for your unfailing presence in our lives and for all the blessings that you so generally offer us. 
Hear us, O oh God. Today, as we celebrate Mother's Day, we give thanks for mothers the world over. We give thanks for all those who have nurtured and cared for us, remembering especially birth mothers, adoptive mothers, surrogate mothers, aunts, grandmothers, teachers, neighbors, and all women who have shared their faith with us. We give thanks for mentors, for friends, and for those who have been Jesus to us. Hear us, O oh God. We pray compassion in God for those mothers who have been hurt, disillusioned or disappointed in their role as mother. We pray for those who have been denied a longed for chance at motherhood and for those whose years of mothering have been cut short by the loss of a child. Hear us, O oh God. We lift up before you, O oh God, the members of our human family around the world, for those who are afflicted or suffering at this time, for those in need of healing, for those who require bread or shelter, for those who live in violent homes and communities, for those who are grieving, and for those whose needs are known to you alone. Hear us, O God. For what, else, for what else would you like to ask the Lord in prayer today for? We pray for George, who has a brain tumor. Hear us, O oh God. Holy God, we lift up uh, Kim to you. Um, we pray for her scoliosis derma. And we just pray for all the things that she has to endure. Hear us, O oh God. Holy God, we lift up all those immigrants who are in need of our deep love and care. Hear us, O oh God. Holy God, we lift up Russ, who has had a stroke, and we thank you for the care that he's been given. Hear us, O God. We give thanks, O God, for... Um, the wonderful people who are preparing a wonderful brunch for us today. We ask that you bless the hands of all those who have prepared food today. That will be the grace to you. Hear us, O oh God. For baby Bell, who we ask for comfort and care. Hear us, O oh God. God, thank you for Shaylin. Thank you for, you know, a cool ten in this tournament. Lord, I, I know that, you know, just in our daily lives, you're, you're with us. And so thank you for tennis and bless her family as they just uh, spend time together in this cool event that's to come. We just thank you for them in Jesus' name. Hear us, oh God. <laughs> we give you thanks, oh God, for hearing our prayers, for never leaving us orphaned, Lord. We thank you for uh, always being there. Hear us, O oh God. Amen. We uh, will turn to our time of peace. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all. We ask that you take a moment to share peace with each other in the way you feel most comfortable.
thank you for your offerings that you provide to Bethany, both of your time and your talents and your treasure. And we have been asking, uh, we'll be asking for your help. We are in need, and, and that will be in, in many announcements. But we thank you for all that you do. We thank you for the hands, because it takes, <clears throat> it takes many hands, and we all know that, to keep uh, Bethany going through its ministries. We thank you for all your generous uh, treasures that you provide. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in the end of the ages to save and to redeem us and to proclaim us to your will. He is your word inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven. He, took, he, he there took on our nature in our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust in you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we remember the Lord Jesus until he comes. For Christ has died, and Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Please uh, join with me in the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> there are so many times in looking back in life where I know that Jesus was there because there was no other way to get through them. And I pray that in the happy times, at, there has been someone to celebrate with you. And in the sad times, there was someone to care for you. We come to this table in all those emotions and all those spaces through celebration, through happiness, through Mother's Day celebrations, but also in Mother's Day sadnesses. And we just pray that you feel God's presence with you on this day and in every day. And in this meal, this is where you meet Jesus face to face. And we pray that that is that feeling for you here today. For our friends online, this is the body of Christ, and it is given for you. And this is the blood of Christ and it is shed for you. Amen. All are welcome at the Lord's table.
please pray with me. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, gosh. This is the hard part. Yes, it is. At this point, we'd like to invite uh, Rick and Ardeth back up, and we will surround them. Um, would anyone, could anyone put the communion back together? And we'll have them in the middle. <laughs> Yes, please put the, I know, it's extra work today. Thank you. We're going to have uh, Ardeth and Rick come and, uh, and have y'all surround them. Is it a puzzle piece? Yeah. Nope, that's the other way. <laughs> We're sure it can only go t one direction. So. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's what the plan is. So, um, just a sec. <laughs> okay. We'll give them a chance before they get bombarded. So, give them a chance now. Okay. And anyone who would like to come and lay hands on them. And if you can't reach them, then please touch your neighbor and bless them through. Others, I know it's hard. Yeah, I know. I we all have to get through this, Rick. <laughs> it's gonna be hard. <laughs> so I know um, I'm gonna actually give you all a mo a second in the middle of this to kind of say a quick blessing on your own, but I am gonna just start with. Uh, the two of you are very loved, and you will be very, very missed. And I'm just going to start with the Irish blessing, and then I would love if you would all just say, um, you know, a quick blessing to them as they are moving away from us um, in a couple days. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sunshine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. So would anyone like to just say a blessing as in we wish you well? Thank you. We thank you. You've been such a love of this community. And we thank you for your leadership and your talents and your kindness and your welcoming spirit and your fixing and your helping and all the things you've done over zillions of years. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 35 years. Thank you. 
your loves, and we wish you well. We wish you peace and joy and happiness and friendships and community. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. <laughs> All right. We had just a little bit more. <laughs> uh, if we can get through, if, finish the rest here. And uh, then I'm just going to say a grace for our holy and gracious God. Uh, we give you thanks for um, all the mothers here who have been mothers, had mothers, for those who miss mothers, and those who celebrate being a mother. We thank you for all those people who have stepped in in those places where you have needed a mothering person by you. Thank you for being a mentor, for being a teacher, for being a coach, for being um, a volunteer, for being God in the flesh to somebody. And with that, we thank you for the food that is on the table before us. And we hope that you all join us for fellowship. With that, let us receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. Please stand for the final song. Alleluia, sing to Jesus.
Jesus Christ lives in you.